Hey guys, what's up? Check it out. So today I am sharing with you a uh, an install that we have scheduled this week and I thought these things were pretty cool. I feel like um, it could potentially save customers thousands out there. This could actually uh, be an awesome marketing tool that uh, we're working on right now to try to educate the public of some options that they have when it comes to upgrading an electrical service and that costly repair. Okay, so as you know, if you're an electrician, uh, service upgrades is a common thing around our country right now, and a service upgrade is not a cheap, cheap thing to do, right? In our area, I would say in most cases, and these things are getting more expensive as the day uh, passes, but I'd say at minimum, at the very minimum to do a service upgrade in our area, you're looking at 4,500 bucks. That's it's probably off the top of my head, 4,500, they could get up to $10,000 in some situations, depending on what you're dealing with, how big is the house, what is the complexity of it, just what are all the details, right? But in any instance, a service upgrade due to a property is never cheap, it's never easy, it's abrasive, you know, we're updating the grounding, we gotta get the, the cold water uh, ground down to the cold water entry of the house, you know, we're running ground rods, we're recreating the service mass or the underground or whatever. There's just a whole lot of stuff that goes into it that uh, could get very expensive for a homeowner. So what we're finding around the country right now and not, not just the country, but around the world in particular is uh, an energy crisis is, is what they're calling it, right? An energy crisis where um, peak demand hours, for example, the hot season, right? Summer's coming up here real soon. Everybody in the city is running their air conditioning at the same time. What happens to the electrical grid at that time? Well, it becomes overloaded, right? So the more electrical equipment we are connecting to our home, the more strain that is going onto the electrical grid, the overall grid. So that's why you're hearing stories of in South Africa or California with the rolling blackouts where um, the supply of electricity isn't meeting the demand that's required in the marketplace is basically what's happening. So what we're seeing also, as you guys know, uh, for the past, I don't know, five years or so is the EV market taking off, right? Electrical vehicles, that is a, that's a big deal right now. There's just so much incentive to buy these electric vehicles and, and take that route with everything, which is, you know, which is, which is, you know, in a sense, it's a great idea and I could see how it works but there's still so many issues that need to be worked out. As many of you guys know, you know, it's like, you're either a, a electric vehicle guy or, or not, right? Well, um, I'm both, right? So I literally have a one ton turbo diesel sitting in the driveway and my, my wife drives a 4XE uh, Jeep that's like a hybrid thing or whatever, but we plug it in and we charge it. So I'm not, I don't get caught up in like taking sides or anything. I could see the benefit to both of it. And as a contractor, and a potential contract or for Sparkies out there, there's a huge market out there for this stuff. And we have made um, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the electrification sector over the past four or five years, as we are part of a, what's called a Cumerit network that we've just done endless electric vehicle chargers and residential homes. We've done a bunch of commercial stuff. And on the commercial side, what we're seeing is uh, like, for example, Domino's Pizza, right? So they are, providing their own vehicles for for employees to drive rather than driving their own vehicles. They're providing vehicles now for employees to drive and all these vehicles are electric. So we had a contract with all the Domino's in our area to uh, install electric vehicle chargers. And so you'll, we see stuff like that. Wherever there's fleets involved, um, the government is basically incentivizing uh, big business, small business to to uh, go electric, right? So, so that's the point of my video here is so this thing here, right? And this is, there's there's many different brands. There's, a, I think like DCC. This one in particular is PSP. It's a new one that we're gonna try out for the first time, but this guy right here is what you call a load shedding device, okay? So a load shedding device. Basically, just by looking at it, this thing looks like a contactor to me with some type of relays in it that are gonna be controlled by CTs. If you're an electrician, you're familiar with CTs, they're current transformers, right? So these ones specifically are pretty nice because, let's see here, I probably should have did this before the video. 
Anyway, they just open up. You don't have to pull the wires off of the breaker or off of the lugs to install these things. These things will just open up on the side um, and you just clamp them over the wire. But, okay, so a load shedding device. What this thing does is it will, this one in particular, we're using it for an EV charger for a, for a customer that has a 100 amp, old, 100 amp service. They have a really old house. They have no gas to their house. They have all electric appliances. I did load calcs on his property and he had, oh, that, that was the other thing. He had a bunch of baseboard heat in his property, electric baseboard heat. So he was already maxed out on the, uh, uh, the load um, available according to load calculations, right? So he was maxed out. So going and adding an EV charger to his house is just gonna push him over the, push him over the edge with all this stuff. So what they've done, you have a couple options. As far as I know, you have a couple options. One is to upgrade your service. As I was explaining uh, at the beginning of this video, super costly, right? Minimum 4,500 bucks. Shooting from my hip, but minimum in our area, 4,500 bucks. Maximum, I've done service changes that were eight, nine thousand dollars, twelve thousand um, dollars, and and I mean they could go up from there. So and it's abrasive to your property, right? You're gonna have a day out of electricity. There's a whole bunch of coordinating that goes into it. The reason why it's so expensive is just all the coordination that has to take place on a, on your property. Um, we have to coordinate with the power company to come and de-energize the, the power going to your house in the morning. In between that, we're building the service. We're running new ground wires to the required places. We're building you an overhead mast or an underground pole, whatever it is. We're installing the new breakers. We're bonding everything at the main disconnects. We're installing all new materials. You know, we're working out the kinks at the end of the job. We're labeling all the new circuits and breakers required in your, in your property. You know, we're checking everything at the end of the day, the 220 stuff, the 120 stuff, making sure everything's working at night, your hot water, your furnace, your air conditioner, whatever it is, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And then at the end of the day, you have to have your inspection scheduled the day before for the inspector to come out the next day when you're finished with the job, he could sign off on it and releases it to the power company which then has the green light to come back and didn't hook up all their lines to, to, uh, to your new service. So, you know, not, not, they're not, they're not as a master electrician, I've done probably hundreds of service upgrades. I don't know, dozens, I guess. I don't know, something like that. We've done a lot. We've done a lot. So there, we know what it takes and how much time it takes and, and the things that you could run into, but in any case, it's expensive. Okay. So why are you getting a service upgrade? because you don't have enough electricity, you don't have a big enough power lines coming into your house, feeding all the circuits that are branched out, spidered out into your house, the main lines coming in are too small. They're protected by a 100 amp breaker and that 100 amp breaker will trip once it senses your house is exceeding 100 amps when your air conditioner's on, your electric dryer's on, your hot tub's on, your EV charger's on, all these things add up in amps, right? And once it exceeds that 100 amps, that breaker is going to trip. So just, just so you know, you know, the common um, service sizes here in our part of the country, and I'm sure the rest part of the country, but 100 amp, there's 125s, there's 150s, and there's 200s. So four common uh, uh, service sizes uh, that, that we're dealing with. In the older homes, you know, it's typically 100 amps. So what we'll, we'll find that all the time. And that's the case here is we're, we're dealing with a hundred amp service. The guy has all this electric baseboard heat. He has no gas for the property. All his appliances are electric. And now he wants to install a EV charger. So we gave him a quote to uh, in, upgrade his electrical service. And that was just so way far out of his budget. So option B, right, is a load shedding device. And this load shedding device to sum it up, what it does is it limits the time that it will allow your electric vehicle to be charged based on the amount of current, the amount of power your home is currently using so that it doesn't overload it, okay? So this thing is just basically like a switch, a light switch. It turns on and gives you the green light when it says, you know what, we got power available and it turns itself off when it senses you have too much stuff going on and it, it's not gonna allow you to charge a car. So 
The great thing about this is it is way cheaper. I think this guy right here in particular, we were somewhere in the five, four to $600 range for this, this piece, this product right here, okay? It comes with this nice three R box. It comes with your relay contactor set up inside is what I'm gonna call it. Um, it comes with your CTs that clamp around the cables, cover, instructions, right? Destructions. So pretty simple setup. Um, and I'll update when we, when we ins actually install this to show the actual installation. But I guess the point of all this is just to let you guys know that you have options. When you're out there trying to acquire business or selling these jobs and somebody wants an EV charger and you have to pull a permit and the city that you're working in requires you to do load calculations and your load calculations are way over the required or allotted amount according to NEC, city guidelines, all that stuff. You don't have an option and we're running into this left and right over and over and over and over where these homes, smaller homes, um, don't have adequate power. Therefore, we are having to uh, install these types of devices here that are called load shedding devices, which are um, noticed and accepted uh, per National Electrical Code. And I have yet to see a city inspector question me about it as far as the... Um, uh, if it's legal or not, I've had inspectors not know what it was because, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to say this is a new product. These things have been around for a long time. This this idea has been around for a long time, but we're just now seeing this market reemerge uh, with the fierceness because of the electrical vehicles. And so it's very similar. I don't know how it is where you guys are, but it's very similar in the summertime. You've probably seen like the... Um, the uh, whoever your uh, power company is come through and put these devices on your air conditioners and it, it doesn't allow you to run your air conditioner at certain times of the day uh, or whatever it is well that, that's basically what this is um on a uh, you know and then and then we see it like in large scale we we see these load shedding devices at power plants and stuff like that like i was reading an article about south africa and the energy crisis there well they shut down the entire grid uh for certain amounts of time to generate enough electricity to be able to supply the supply the people or whatever and they're doing that through what's called load shedding okay so so that's what this is so when you're out there right and and the way i see this and the way the market's going these days is man everything's freaking expensive right and and it's no different for electricians like our quotes are going higher our our our, our materials our labor our insurance our gas our everything, all of our overhead is getting getting much more expensive. So who pays for that, right? The customer has to pay for that. So when we're out there and you have to get creative with this stuff these days, I truly feel like we need to give people options. That's where we're starting to see the market head is you need to be able to give people options to understand here's option A, here's option B, here's option C. A is obviously the $8,000 service upgrade, 200 amps, um, um, or, or you have option B where we could go with something like this. That's going to be a lot less. You know, I think we quoted to install this guy for under, under $2,000. It was something, I don't know the exact number, but it was under 2k, um, which is great. You know, like, I mean, we'll, we'll probably make a little bit of money on this and, and keep everybody happy at the same time. So, so real quick, I'm going to read what, uh, what, what this describes this as, but it says load watch power manager allows loads up to 60 amps to be added. Okay, so this one in particular, one thing I forgot to mention is you could get these things in different sizes. This one I ordered, like I said, was for an EV charger specifically, so it was up to 60 amps. Most of your EV chargers, 90% of them right now, are not gonna exceed the 60 amp rating, uh, unless you're like a Ford Lightning or, or, or I think even some Teslas, they, go, they got the massive um, uh, requirements for, for battery charging, which is just crazy to me, it's like, uh, where, where are you going to fit that in a house? But anyway, this one's good for 60 amps right there. Okay. So this says allows loads up to 60 amps to be added to any main service panel or sub panel that is a risk of overload or will become overloaded when a new load is introduced. That's our case here. The onboard intelligent microcontroller monitors the load on the existing panel and only allows the added load access to the panel when capacity is available. Installation requires open breaker. Okay, cool. So really simple. I don't know if you can see these instructions here, but as you can see, this one's literally made for, they have an EV charger right there. You know, it's showing the 
the uh, the electric utility coming into your meter, going into your main service to your sub panel, to the load management device, out to the EV charger. Simple setup, guys. So if you're an electrician, it's just a switch, right? It's just a switch that monitors how much load's going through your, or how much load is available, really. That's what it is. So, you know, these things come in all different sizes, but this one says it can be installed on any main or sub panel up to a thousand amps to add managed loads up to 60 amps continuous. Uh, adapts to any application using the precision field adjustable set points. So you could set these things up set points. Um, I haven't got too too far into that, so I will update what that means. Is it like, can you set the time of day that you want it to charge? Um, things like that, I'm sure that's what it's referring to. So it prevents overloading and saves costly upgrades to panel or electrical infrastructure. Controller is self-powered from line in, voltage, external power supply not required, so that's cool. Utilizes a magnetic latching relay for long-term reliability and box lug in and out terminals for ease of installation. So the install does look super simple, guys. You know, basically we're gonna install this thing um, right next to the sub panel. And in this case here, this EV charger is going right next to the sub panel also. So it'll be a clean setup. You know, it's in the garage, we're gonna have the breaker box, this, and then out of the breaker box, it's gonna go through this switch, right? Or load management system down to the EV charger. So the EV charger electricity will be flowing through this and managed by this. So pretty simple. I think it's a genius um, strategy when you're out there selling and you run across these EV chargers or hot tubs or whatever it is, and you wanna be safe, right? So 90% of the EV chargers we do, we pull permits on them. Does everybody pull permits? No, of course not, they don't, right? So if you wanna go in and, and, and throw an EV charger into 100 amp service with a bunch of electric baseboard heat and electric water heaters and stuff, be my guest, but obviously you're running the risk of that call, right? So nobody wants that. So in our case, we pull permits on 90% of the EV chargers we do, unless the customer is absolutely like, you know what, I don't want it, I just want a charger, I'm good whatever, then in that case, they sign a paper. We say, no problem, here it is. These are the risks that you're running. Here's your load calcs anyway. This is what it looks like, done. So so yeah, pretty simple stuff, man. Uh, on the back side of this, gives you a bunch of error codes. And like I said, there's numerous products out there. This uh, PSP brand is a first for us, but I'll tell you, it looks pretty slick so far. Looks like an easy installation. And I will update as soon as it's installed and show you what that looks like. So yeah, take care, have a good day. Reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.